Welcome to the next Exceed lesson, everybody. Here I'll be compiling types of attacks down to an easily conceptualized list. Hopefully by now you've gotten a solid amount of games under your belt so you can quickly apply this to your experience, but even if you're still starting out, this video should help you plenty. My goal here is that after watching this and playing a few practice games, you'll be able to tell exactly what an attack's strengths and weaknesses are. There's going to be a lot of information here, but follow along as best you can like last time, don't be shy to rewind where necessary, and at the end, I'll try to bring it together in a way that makes sense. Without further ado, let's dive into attack shapes. The term attack shapes may seem weird, but think of them like types or kinds of attacks. Some of these are very unique, but with only so many useful combinations of stats and effects possible, many attacks have similar enough shapes to be combined into categories. For instance, if you see a special with slow speed, 1 to 3 range, relatively high power, and 6 defense, you may immediately recognize it as essentially a sweep. Just like sweep itself, it'll get crushed by spike, retaliate favorably against grasp, trade equally against another sweep, and so on. Since it reacts identically to sweep in the vast majority of cases, it can be described as having the sweep attack shape, or as a sweep-like attack during strike resolution. The exact trigger effects and impact on macro game plan will vary based on character, but, at least for me, it's a lot easier to remember the opponent's character basically has four sweeps in their deck when choosing what to strike with. Here's another example. These attacks are all assault-likes. They are speed 5-ish, move forward 2, and strike at range 1 like assault itself. So instead of thinking shovel charge, I think assault-like which pushes and draws cards. Instead of dive kick, I think assault-like that becomes immune at range 1 after. And instead of double sweep kick, I think low power speed 6 assault, including the advantage, that can't hit if used at range 1 due to advancing rather than closing. We can similarly think of many other attacks as having normal-like shapes, like Grasp, plus other speed 7 range 1s that stun out unguarded mid-speeds and crosses. Cross, including reverse crosses that move in the opposite direction, and even attacks that don't seem like they're replicating cross until you really see how they work in practice. Dive, as well as those which don't have the same if you moved over the opponent effect. Spike, although very few attacks fit the profile of Spike exactly. And Focus, some of which borrow the cannot be moved aspect, and others which simply have the 7 defense, even without the armor. Then we can get just a little more complicated with attacks like Hell's Fang. Hell's Fang is like a hybrid assault dive which pushes. It's unguarded, speed 4, power 4, hits at range 4, and grants advantage. When considering this attack in my head, I don't have to think of all of that. All I think is, this is practically like playing dive, but it hits like assault and pushes too. There are plenty such attacks that can be described as a hybrid like this, if it makes it easier for you, but you don't have to. Remember that these tips are for your benefit, so go with the way of describing an attack or the level of complexity for this framework that best suits you. I'm just explaining how I do it. For specials which don't resemble normals, the possibilities are nearly endless, but I can provide a decent skeleton framework to use for remembering common ones. Let's start with every special in the game and divide them first into melee attacks, those which hit at range 1, and ranged attacks, those which do not. First let's go over the melee specials. Like we just divided all the specials, we can divide melee specials into two varieties, max range 1 and 2, or max range 3 plus. The primary differences between these two are the ability to participate in the range 3 mix-up, and whether the option is strong against an opposing grasp. Range 1 to 3s with guard destroy grasp anywhere. Range 1 to 2 attacks can only strike back against grasp if your back is to the wall, and range 1 attacks are either faster than grasp or will lose to it, unless they can't be pushed. Melee specials which only hit at range 1 are rare, and are usually grasp-likes or impactful mid-speeds which beat slows. Note that these mid-speeds will sometimes beat sweep cleanly, but need additional help to beat focus due to its 7 defense and push resistance. Range 1 to 2 melee specials are more varied, but still have some common varieties. Among the cross likes and focus likes are fast cross counters, speed 6 or 7 attacks used to outspeed and beat cross, safe mid speeds, attacks which don't do much damage but come with enough guard to absorb fast options and then move out, often to range 4, and unsafe callouts, 
unguarded mid-speeds which have devastating effects against slower options, and synergize very well with boosted speed or guard. Range 1-3 to three specials include the Assault Likes and Sweep Likes, but also dedicated Grasp Counters, safe mid-speeds which lose to slows, usually by losing all their armor, 1-3 to three On Curve Attacks, which work effectively like Assault except that they don't move, and the rare but powerful Eye Attack, a speed 7 range 1-3 to three attack which has been largely discontinued on characters after Season 2. Melee attacks with max range 4 or greater are almost like ranged attacks which also hit at range 1, more so than just melee attacks. These are powerful tools for many reasons, but usually because they do well against attacks that push or retreat out of melee, and attacks like Assault and Dive that attempt to dodge around projectiles. Among these are Extended Sweep Likes, which pummel back against both projectiles and dives, Reactive Cross Counters, which seek to absorb mobile fast attacks and then strike back harder, though they lose to slows, and finally Fast Gap Closers. Although I don't consider Fast Gap Closers to really be a melee attack, they're more so a ranged attack that moves you inward, since they're pretty bad when you play them in melee range. And that is a good segue to get right into the ranged specials. Ranged specials are... special, and require a lengthier explanation than the melee ones. Because they don't hit at close ranges, they constantly battle against assault and dive, even for characters which don't have any assault or dive-like specials. With this idea in mind, let's go over the different ranges, similar to how we did melee. The most common are the range 2-5 and the range 3-6, followed closely by range 2-3, but there's a ton of variations, so where can we even begin? Here's how I conceptualize them. The standard projectile baseline is range 3-5, which is often altered slightly by adding or subtracting one minimum or maximum range. If a ton of maximum range is added, I like to call that a long projectile, one that hits at range 7 or 8. And then finally, there's the 2-3 short projectile, which sometimes comes in 2-4 by adding one max range. In addition to projectiles, there's also the oxymoronic ranged melee attack, a gap closer which advances so far that they don't hit at range 1 like dive. Usually these gap closers can be treated identically to a projectile of the same stat line, except that you move in close but sometimes when the edge of the arena gets involved, you can't actually move far enough to miss and it effectively becomes a melee attack. So with that in mind, let's look at the different ranged attack types. The standard projectile is heavily defined by its interactions with Assault and Dive, which determine if it's safe to use at ranges 3 and 4, respectively. They also hit at range 5 safely, and most can either hit range 2, making them partially usable in melee, or range 6, making them outreach the ones that end at 5. Usually these attacks fit somewhere among four versions when analyzed in a vacuum. Fast, safe mid-speed, unsafe mid-speed, and slow. Fast projectiles are usually speed 5 and guardless, and are made for safely halting dives and assaults. As long as your character has a fast projectile at range 4, you can be sure that most opponents can't close that gap. Any projectile with speed 6 is king, shutting down other fast projectiles, assaults at range 3 on defense, and cross as a defensive option, as long as you initiate. However, these usually have very low power, cost resources, or have some other condition that needs to be met. The safe mid-speed is like all reliable. Usually coming with speed and guard 4, these are best used when initiating at range 4 or more, forcing the opponent to block, trade using a faster guarded projectile, or eat the damage. There's seldom a bad outcome when using one of these properly, but the cracks start to form at range 3 because of assault likes, on defense versus dives, against fast gap closers, or when the opponent has a fast projectile with boosted power. Slow projectiles are usually speed 2, 5 or more guard, and 5 or more power. Some of these attacks deal a blow so devastating that gap closers are nearly required to be thrown within their ranges just in case making thinning the opponent's movement options a central pillar of their character's game plans. However, this is also their primary weakness. They'll be punished heavily if you're not careful when striking with these slow projectiles. Unsafe mid-speeds are typically speed 3 attacks made to stun slows or dodge them with a movement effect, much like their melee counterparts. 
However, their name can be misleading since they often resemble slow projectiles known for their sturdiness. That's because their unsafe quality doesn't have to come from losing to fast attacks. They can also lose to gap closers like the slows do. But the former exists too. One last thing to note is how range interacts with cross. Range 2 to 5s and 3 to 6s will still hit an opponent who crosses at minimum range, though this is usually only relevant for the former. Also, on turn 1, an attack with 6 max range can hit a crossing opponent, but 5 cannot. This can help you determine if a turn 1 cross is a good idea given your opponent's attacks. Most characters with multiple projectiles will have at least one hit 2 to 5 and another 3 to 6, leading to a turn 1 mix-up at best, but some characters have no answer that will hit a turn 1 cross at all, giving you a get out of jail free card for that first strike. Finally, we have what I think of as long projectiles, where an attack is either minimum range 4, making them easier to duck under even if you won't hit, or maximum range 7 or 8, allowing you to outrange the vast majority of opposing ranged attacks if you find yourself on opposite sides of the arena. For the most part, these still act just like standard projectiles in 90% of cases, but be aware of their existence, and don't get too close to the corners against opponents who could abuse this. Next, we have the short projectile, typically range 2 to 3. You've likely already recognized this 2 to 3 range as being the same as spikes, and that's a crucial detail that affects the kinds of attacks we see here. These attacks naturally fit into the range 3 mix-up, and, like spike, automatically lose to assault or other gap closers that strike before them. Therefore, it's rare to see a proper slow attack with this profile, as it would lose to Assault, Dive, Spike, and at best trade with Sweep. Rare as they are though, these do still exist in some form, as answers to specific threats or as powerful punishes once the opponent's deck is thin of options. Most commonly however, 2-3 projectiles are range 3 on-curve or above-curve options like these. Like their standard projectile cousins, these attacks are for calling out assaults and dives, so you'll typically find them on ranger characters geared more towards keeping away. The ones you really have to watch out for are the ones that push a retreat out to range 4, because this makes them completely unbeatable at range 3 unless you also have a speed 6, guarded 1 to 4, or guarded projectile. This is partly why I stress, don't think you have to win every strike. There are only two copies of any attack, and these are often 4 specials or low power, so take your licks and keep fighting. These specials actually show exactly the case where a slower 2-4 attack isn't useless. Some specials aren't meant to always be good attacks to throw since they lose to so many common threats, but against the right character, having a so-called tech option to heavily punish that one rare thing your character otherwise struggles with will make your opponent think twice before abusing you. Lastly, I want to mention attacks which aren't designed to always hit, but rather to position yourself or dodge damage. Like using cross at range 3 to dodge away from an incoming assault despite not hitting, these attacks are made to reposition, even if they don't get you gauge. Zangief loves getting into range 1, but can't do much anywhere else, so banishing flat can help him dodge projectiles and move closer at the cost of gauge. Propeller Knight can similarly use swoop as a grasp-like, or as a way to dodge projectiles and Amina can dodge many dangerous attacks at range 1 despite it not actually hitting. Range X do not hit you effects, and higher speed doesn't hit you effects are somewhat rare, but their existence is often game changing. They can allow characters to completely dominate certain ranges, they can be a disarming option against characters which have a dangerous boost in play, or they can cover a character's weak points, like moving past projectiles. And finally, there's just totally unique options. A lot of characters have their own resources to manage, or mechanics to play with, so there's always going to be more than I can just go over here. But you know, I did my best. That must have been a lot of information, but don't get pushed away, especially if you're relatively new. It'll take some playtime to really absorb and begin applying it all, and that's totally normal. With this framework you can narrow the game space down to common attack shapes, modifications to those common attack shapes, and lastly, totally unique cards that you'll just have to memorize. I first tried to memorize every enemy attack and then compare every interaction to really understand what's going on, and it's tedious and demoralizing at best. Now that I can see an attack and think, oh, that's just a short projectile get out of jail free like the one on that other character I play, except this one can push in addition to pull. Or this is a 1-2 melee designed to beat sweep by pushing 2, but it won't be able to beat focus. 
This way, the game feels understandable, and my brain power gets used on strategy, not on calculating and memorizing outcomes. I hope I was able to save you the trouble. But that's all for now, and I will see you next time.